Hello Grade 10s, welcome to today's lesson on measurement. Let's start by going over some key concepts. Now, in measurement we've got two basic things that we look at. We look at surface area as well as volume. Now, often people will struggle with what's the difference between surface area and volume. So what I want you to think about right now is a tub of paint and a paintbrush. If you are going to paint the side of a cylinder, much like this cylinder over here, you are going to paint the surface area. So by painting the outside and the top and the bottom, you're going to be painting the area that is the surface area. However, if I wanted to discover what the volume was, I would take that tub of paint and I would pour it into the inside of the cylinder, finding the volume of it. So surface area is the outside, volume is the amount of paint that can fit on the inside. There are two different calculations that we do for surface area and volume, and they're actually pretty easy to figure out if you know all of your formulas for area. So let's start by going over those formulas. Now these formulas, you started with when you were in junior school. This over here is meant to be a square, and a square, you may have been taught, is side times side. Now personally, I don't like the formula side times side. I like to refer to everything as perpendicular height times base. So with everything, I'm going to change it to height times base. So for a square, to find the area of a square, you're going to multiply the base by the height. Now most of you will know that to find the area of a rectangle, we do the same thing. We take the base and we multiply by the perpendicular height. For those of you who can't remember what perpendicular height is, it's the height where the right angle is. What is a right angle? It's 90 degrees. Now I tell people who struggle to figure out where the perpendicular height is, is think of it as, as an elevator. Here's our little man standing in the elevator. The elevator is going up and down along the perpendicular height. And that's how you find the perpendicular height. There's our height and here's our base. With the triangle, here's our elevator, our 90 degree angle. So that's our perpendicular height. Here's our base, but you'll notice we're missing the rest of the quadrilateral. And that is why a triangle's formula for area is half times base times perpendicular height. So we still use the perpendicular height we still use the base, but we halve the measurement because we're taking away the rest of the quadrilateral. Let's go to the next page where we have areas of shapes we don't see every day. Now this over here is called a trapezium. And a trapezium is defined by the fact that it only has two parallel sides. And those two parallel sides are very important to find the area. We're going to call this side up here A and this side down here B. Now, the reason we've done this is because we don't have a constant base. We don't have a base that's the same on the top and the bottom. So what we're going to do is find the average distance of these two measurements. Because there are two measurements, what are we going to do once we add them together? We're going to divide by two to find the average distance. So let's do that. We'll start by adding A and B. And then we said we were going to divide it by 2. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. And that means we have found our base measurement. So this over here represents the base. And what do we multiply the base by? We multiply it by the perpendicular height. Here's our elevator with the man going up the elevator to show us that that is the perpendicular height. The last um, quadrilateral that we're dealing with is a parallelogram. Now a parallelogram has opposite sides that are parallel. So that means that this side is parallel to that side and the top is parallel to the bottom. It also means that they are equal sides. So the top 
is equal to the bottom measurement and the sides are equal to each other. Once again, we're going to take the perpendicular height and multiply it by the base. And that's all we do to find that area. Perpendicular height multiplied by base. So whenever you're working with the triangle, a quadrilateral, you need to look for that perpendicular height, that elevator with the man standing in to indicate the rope going up and down. You multiply that perpendicular height by the base. If it is a triangle, you then multiply it by a half. And remember the trapezium, you've got to add the top and the bottom together, granted that they are the parallel sides, half that and then multiply it by the height. Let's move on to the circle. By now you should be very familiar with the circle. And the circle area is pi r squared. Let's just label that as area. Now why am I labeling it as area? Because I'm also going to talk about its circumference. With many of our calculations, we have to use circumference to work out something. So we might as well show that circumference is two pi r. These are two formulas you should know off by heart. It is possible to learn tricks to remember which one does which, like for instance area, once you've calculated it will become centimeters squared and the area of a circle is pi r squared, so you remember squared with squared, but just in general remember those formulas and then you won't go wrong. Let's move on to some work. Now right prisms means that they are going to be going up at a right angle. So right means right angle. Over here we have a rectangular prism and the way we work out surface area is we are going to take the rectangular prism and unfold it. Now you get used to drawing these unfolded things and the technical term for it is a net. So what I've drawn over here is the unfolded version of the rectangular prism. Now if you remember in the beginning we talked about painting the outside of a solid. Now in this case a surface area what we're going to do is we're interested in the surface area of the solid. So we want to know the area of each of the individual pieces, add them all together and that will give us the total surface area. For us to do this, it requires us knowing how to work out the surface area of all of those shapes we've just been through. With a rectangular prism, it's fairly easy because it's just height times base over and over again. Looking at this particular rectangular prism, what you'll notice is this side is the same size as that side at the back. And of course, this side on the side is the same size is that on the side. And then if we really wanted to make it messy, we could color in the top and the bottom showing you that those sides were the same as well. If we were to do it over here, that side is the same as this side. Then we've got the green ones. Green ones will be this side and this side are the same size. And then the top and the bottom are the same size. Okay, now that we have shown which sides are equal to each other, let's show how we do a basic calculation. We'll start with the pink sides. Now the pink sides have a base and a perpendicular height. So we've got base times perpendicular height for the first pink one. How many pink rectangles do we have? We have two pink rectangles. Then we have the green rectangles and once again it's base times perpendicular height. How many do we have? We have two. And lastly, we have the yellow rectangles, which are also base times perpendicular height. And how many of those do we have? Two of those. And that would be how we work out the total surface area. Okay, all of our other calculations are pretty much the same concept. We take a shape or a solid and we isolate it into its various shapes and then we calculate the surface area of each shape. 
Now that we've looked at the rectangular based prism, let's move on to something called the triangular based prism. Now, in order to interpret all of these shapes, it's important to know how, or these solids, it's important to know how they get their names. They get na their names on the shape that is on either side of the solid. In other words, the triangular based prism has a triangle on the one side and on the other side. All the way around, it's rectangles, but the triangles set it apart from a rectangular based prism or whatever else it might be. Let's take a look. And just a reminder that we are looking at total surface area. Over here is the triangular based prism and let's draw the net. Now for those of you who weren't listening earlier, a net is what it looks like if it has been unfolded. So if we unfold the triangular based prism, you'll notice that our triangular base is both at the top and the bottom and how many rectangles do we have? We have three rectangles over there. So the surface area of a triangular based prism is going to be the two triangles plus the three rectangles. Now the three rectangles are not necessarily all the same. If it were an equilateral triangle then yes, all three triangles would be exactly the same. But in this case, it's not an equilateral triangle. We've got the area of a triangle over here, and we've got the height over there, and then we've got the different sides of the triangle. So I'm going to assume that they are all different lengths, and I'm going to call them A, B, and C. Now you'll notice I've labeled the bottom B because I also want it to be my base. There's my elevator and so this is the height of my triangle. In order to work out the area of the triangles, I'm going to multiply them by two firstly because there are two triangles. Then it's half times the base times the height and that will work out the area of the two triangles. Now I need to work out the area of the three rectangles. And what I've got is I've got A for this distance, B for the next one, and C for this one with the length of H or a height of H, which means my first triangle is going to be A times H, my second one, B times H, and my third one, C times H. And that's how we work out the total surface area of a triangle. Moving on to a cylinder. Now a cylinder has a circle at the bottom and the top. So that means its base shape is a circle. How many circles are there? There are two. If we're going to unfold it into a net, we'll have a rectangle that wraps around the two circles on either side. These two circles are identical, so that means we can multiply our circle area by 2. And remember, it's 2 pi r squared. And this measurement down here is our radius. Remember, radius is half of the di diameter. Then we've got the height of the cylinder, which is this measurement over here. But we, what we don't have is this distance over here, or do we? What you'll notice about a cylinder is that the rectangle wraps around the circle, meaning that the distance of the rectangle or the length of the rectangle is the same as the circumference of the circle. So if we want to work out the area of that rectangle, let's add it to the other area, it's going to be the circumference measurement, 2 pi r, times by the height of the cylinder. These are the three basic right prisms that you will need to do your calculations. Let's move on to how to find the volume of each. Volume of right prisms is far easier to work out because all we have to do is find the area of the base. And remember, your base shape is what there are two of. And you need to multiply it by the height of the prism. So in this case, let's make our base this side over here. And we have base times by height. 
and then where is the height of the prism? I'm going to make it this long length over here times by h. So this is the area of the square. Let's just put square in there. Times by the height to get the volume of the rectangular based prism. Triangular based prism, what's the base shape? It's going to be the triangle. So the area of the triangle is going to be half times your perpendicular height times your base. So here's your height and here's your base multiplied by the height of the prism. So you find the area of the base and you multiply by the height of the prism. The cylinder, same thing. Our base shape is a circle. The way we find the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. And what do we multiply the area of the base by? The height of the prism. Here is the height of the prism. Here is the radius. In my opinion, volume is far easier to work out than the surface area. Surface area, you have to look at the shape and dissect the shape and get it right. But volume, you find that base shape, you find the area of it, and you multiply it by the height and you've got it. There's no funny tricks or anything like that. Let's try a couple of questions. Okay, question one. Calculate the surface area and the volume of the rectangular prism if it is closed on all sides. So here we have a rectangular based prism. It's closed on all sides. Because I like volume better, I'm going to start with volume. Now volume requires me to work out the area of the base first. So I'm going to call this side over here the base and say four times three. And then once I've calculated the area of the base, I need to multiply by the height. And my height is 8 centimeters, so I'm going to multiply by 8 centimeters. Now, most of you should be able to do this in your head, but it's often a bad idea to do that in tests and exams. Just check your work with a calculator and you'll see it's 96. Now, the question is, what unit is it? It is in centimeters. But how do we tell if it is centimeters squared or centimeters cubed? And here's the trick. Over here, I have four centimeters times by three centimeters times by eight centimeters. How many centimeters are being multiplied by each other? Three. So that means my answer is in centimeters cubed. Let's look at surface area. I'm just going to write surface area. And how many shapes are there in this? We've got six rectangles. Draw a quick version of the net. And we've got a rectangle that's three and four. And then we've got the eight over here, meaning that that is eight by four. This is eight by three, so on and so forth. So what we've got is one rectangle that is eight by four centimeters this one over here, but it is also the same size as that one over there. So I'm going to multiply that calculation by two because there are two of them. The next one, let's do it in a different color. Three by four and three by four are the same. So I'm going to have three times four. How many rectangles are there that are the same shape? Two. And the last one, let's do in yellow is going to be 3 by 8, and 3 by 8, there are two 3 by 8 rectangles. Let's get rid of that 8, just so it doesn't get confusing. And let's use our calculator to get the final answer. So what we've got are six rectangles represented. We're now using our calculator to type in the numbers. 2 times 8 times 4 plus 2 times 3 times 4 plus 2 times 8 times 3. 
and that is equals to 136 centimeters squared. How do I know it's squared? Well, let's go through that again. 136 centimeters squared. In this particular one, it is centimeters times by centimeters. The two is not a centimeter. So centimeters times by centimeters will give me centimeters squared. Okay. Let's move on to the next question. The next question is linked to the other question. Calculate the surface area if the prism is open at the top. And first we have to decide which is the top. Obviously the top is the top. So I'm not going to calculate that top section over there. What are the measurements for that top sec section? Eight centimeters by three centimeters. So what I'm going to do is take the original surface area and I'm going to subtract a rectangle that is 8 centimeters by 3 centimeters. So in fact if we go back to the previous question what I'm doing is I'm taking out this last one of those rectangles. So instead of saying 2 times 8 times 4 plus 2 times 3 times 4 plus 2 times I'm just saying plus 3 times 8. Okay, and let's do this on our calculator quickly. Uh, 136 minus 8 times 3 is 24. You should know it off by heart. And there we go. 112 is our answer. 112. Which unit is it? Well, it's still surface area. So it's going to be centimeters squared. Let's go on to the next question. A company manufactures dairy products. It has recently created two plastic flavored milk containers. One is a cylindrical container and the other is a rectangular box. The dimensions are indicated in the diagrams provided below. Now these types of questions are our favorite questions to give in tests and exams because what they'll do is they'll ask questions about um, the total surface area and then the packaging co costs or they'll ask about shipping costs and remember that the easier a container is to pack the less your shipping costs are going to be however then your surface area may increase the costs with the production so it's a really good question and a question you'll probably find all through the rest of your high school career let's move on to it show that the volume of milk in both of the containers is 3016 centimeters cubed rounded off to the nearest whole number now it is one of the most irritating things when people don't read this in sentence it makes a big difference if you don't round off so you must remember that you need to round off so the answer we want to get is 3016 centimeters cubed we've got a diagram down here of the cylinder it has a radius of eight centimeters and it has a height, the cylinder has a height of 15 centimeters. You'll notice again that I'm using the capital H to indicate that it's the height of the prism. Now, in order to find the volume of a prism, we first got to start by finding the area of the base, which is pi r squared. And we've got to multiply it by the height of the cylinder, which of course is going to give us pi 8 squared times by 15 and let's check that on our calculator pi times by 8 squared times by 15 gives us an answer of 3015,92894,97 you get the idea what's happened is that we don't have exactly 3016 centimeters cubed we have 3015,9 they want us to round off to the nearest whole number which means we take that 9 and we see that it's more than uh, 0.5 so we round the next number up giving us 3000 3016 centimeters cubed Let's check if our rectangular prism has the same outcome. Now remember that we've got to find the area of the base and I'm going to call the side 
rectangle, my base. So the area of the base is going to be 8 times 15 times by the height of the prism, which is going to be 25.13. And let's type that into our calculator to check that it works. 8 times by 15 times by 25.13 gives us an answer of 3015,6. Once again, it's above comma 5, so that means our whole number rounds up to 3016. 3016 centimeters cubed. With a question like this, they're wanting to check that you can set up the formula correctly and you can get the answer, which is what we've done. Let's move on to question 2b. Now 2b is linked to question 2, so it's the same story about the milk containers and about the cylinder and the rectangular based prism. But now we need to calculate the total surface area of each container. Now that is everything that's used to make this container. Let's start with the cylinder. We're going to start by drawing the net. Remember the net is what it will look like if we unfold the object. And it just helps us to show what the shapes are we're dealing with. So we're dealing with two circles and a rectangle. And you'll remember that the cylinder has influenced the length of the rectangle. The length of the rectangle is actually the same as the circumference of the circle. So the first thing I'm going to do is show that it's going to be two times the area of the circle. So it's two times pi r squared. And we're going to add the area of the rectangle, which is of course this h, times by the circumference of the circle. So it's two pi r for the circumference of the circle times by h. And that's the formula set out from our heads. Let's substitute in the values that we have. 2 times pi r is 8 squared plus 2 times pi r is 8 times by h, which is 15. And then, of course, we use a calculator. So this is going to be I'm moving the calculator over so I can see everything. 2 times by pi times by 8 squared plus 2 times pi times 8 times 15. Gives us an answer of 1,156 comma 1. Now in this particular question it hasn't told us to round off so I'm going to round off to, let's do two decimal places, 1156 comma 11. 1156 comma 11 and of course it's a surface area calculation meaning that our measurement units are centimeters squared. Let's do the rectangular based prism, a little bit more simple because the rectangular based prism is of course just six rectangles. And three of them are actually this, the same as three other rectangles. So what we're going to do is say two times by 25.13 times by eight, so that indicates the bottom and the top rectangle plus 2 times by 8 times by 15 shows the side rectangles and then let's do 2 times by 25.3 25.13 times by 15 gives us the side rectangles. 
let's do the calculations. Now I'm going to use a calculator here. And remember that each of those rectangles are multiplied by 2, so there is still a 2 over there. 2 times by 25.13 times by 8 plus 2 times by 8 times 15. Now these calculators are really great. In my day, we had to type everything in backwards to get the answers we wanted. But now you can just type in everything as you have set it out on your page. And you really should be making use of these calculators to get the answers. Use them properly. Now what you'll notice is the answer is 1395,98. My previous answer, I rounded off to two decimal places. So this answer I'm also going to leave as two decimal places. And let's write it down. 1395,98. Comma 98, and it is a surface area calculation, so that means it's going to be centimeters squared. As a teacher, I know where this question is going. The next question is going to ask me something related to packaging materials and costs and things like that. Another direction this question could have gone is the direction of packaging costs and which one would be easier to transport. With that kind of question, you can start taking things into consideration like weight and things like that. So it's really a fantastic question to practice if you're practicing for tests and exams. Question 2C. Although both containers contain the same amount of milk, the company needs to determine which container will be the cheapest to produce. Determine which container will be the cheapest to produce. Well, let's look at these over here. If we're just looking at the cost of the plastic, then there is less plastic needed for the cylinder than there is for the rectangular based prism. So obviously, the cheaper to produce is going to be the cylinder. With these questions, it's important that you justify your answer. The cylinder. So say that it will be cheaper because it has a low surface area. And I suppose it would be better to say that rather than a lower surface area, it had less of a surface area. With that, let's take a break, grade 10s. After this, we'll go over some more volume and surface area questions. Welcome back, grade 10s. We're now going to spend some time changing dimensions. Now, what that means is we're going to take a solid and then we're going to multiply all of the lengths or all of the dimensions by the same scale factor. Now, scale factor means that you're multiplying all of them by the same amount. If it's just by a factor, then it may be just is referring to one length that you are multiplying by a certain number. But factor very definitely refers to the fact that you are multiplying something by something else. Let's start by going over some concepts. Now, changing dimensions. The effect on surface area when changing the dimensions of a solid by a scale factor. Let's look at that first question we did, where we had a rectangle or a rectangular based prism. Just draw it quickly to give you a quick refresher. The measurement on the side was four, then we had three, and we had eight. And our total surface area was equals to 136 centimeters squared. If we were to multiply all of those sides by a scale factor of two, that means that eight would become 16, three would become six, and four would become eight. What that means is our surface area is going to be equal to 2 times 16 plus 6 plus 2 times 6 times 8. You remember this from before. We have six rectangles, and that means we've got to show the six rectangles. OK, there would be our calculation. Now, what we've really done is we have said 
2 times 2 times 8. Oh, that should be a times, times by 2 times 3, plus 2 times 2 times 3, times 2 times 4. Now I'm sure many of you are thinking I'm crazy at this point because I'm making this problem look far more complicated. But what I want you to see is that our scale factor is recurring in each of these brackets. And of course if we had space for the last bracket I'd show you that it's times by 2 times by 2. So in fact what we're doing is we're taking our original calculation of 8 times 3 and what are we multiplying it by? 2 squared because it's 2 times 2. Let's put that in green. Which means that our total, our final answer is going to increase by a factor of 2 squared. And that's what happens. You'll see over here that surface area is centimeters squared. Our factor or our scale factor is 2, which means that the surface area is going to be increased by 2 squared, which gives us an answer of 136 times by 2 squared, which is 544. Okay, so with the surface area, what we see is that whatever the scale factor is, we're going to multiply the surface area by that scale factor squared. That squared comes from the centimeters squared because we're multiplying centimeters by centimeters, meaning centimeters squared. So if we increase the dimensions, all the dimensions of a rectangular based prism by three, it means we multiply the total surface area by three squared. If we were increasing it by a factor of 5, then we'd multiply the original total surface area by 5 squared. Now, keeping this in mind, what do you think happens when we use volume? Remember, volume is centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, so it's centimeters cubed. If we were to increase a prism by a factor of 9, what would we multiply the original volume by? If you said 9 cubed, you were correct. Let's take a look. So, the effect on volume when changing the dimensions of a solid by a scale factor, if we change, if our original surface area, oh, if our original volume, let's make it up, is going to be 40 centimeters cubed, and we increase the dimensions. by a factor, a scale factor of 3, by a scale factor of 3, our new volume would be 40 times by 3 cubed. Where does that cubed come from? It's because we are multiplying centimeters by centimeters times centimeters. So 40 times by 3 cubed, let's use our calculator, 40 times by 3 to the power of 3 is going to be 1080, which is equals to 1080. What is our unit? Centimeters cubed. Let's try some questions. A rectangular prism has a length of 5 cm, a breadth of 3 cm and a height of 10 cm. The length of each side is increased by a factor of 2.5. By what factor does the surface area of the prism increase? This particular question is asking us to first work out the original surface area and then to work out the new surface area, then find the difference in factors between it. Because we've spoken about this already, we know that the factor of increase is going to be 2.5 to the power of 2, because it's a surface area question. And surface area questions all result in centimeters squared, meaning that our factors will, of increase will be squared as well. Let's do the question. The original surface area 
Let's start with a calculation. I'm not going to go through the whole explanation again. We've done it a couple of times in the last half an hour. And let's not waste any time. So what I'm doing is I'm finding all of the areas of the various rectangles. I am going to use my calculator to calculate this. You'll see I've got 10 times 5, 5 times 3, and 10 times 3, all of them multiplied by 2. And let's use the calculator. Mm, times by 5 plus 2, 5 times 3 plus 2, 10 times 3, giving us an answer of 190. What unit is it in? Well, it's centimeters times centimeters, so it's going to be centimeters squared. Our new uh, dimensions are going to be 10 times by 2.5, which is 25 centimeters. At the bottom, 3 times by 2.5 gives us, let's use the calculator, 3 times by 2.5 gives us 7.5. And 5 times by 2.5 gives us 5 times by 2.5, 12 and a half. So all of these old measurements are now going to be changed to the new pink measurements. Our new surface area is going to be 2 times by 25, 12.5, it's a lot to write out today, 12.5 times by 7.5, and of course I've run out of space, so I'm going to add the rest at the bottom, 7.5 times by 25, and let's see what our answer is. Now, according to our theory, our answer should be 190 times by 2.5 squared, which would be an answer of 1,187.5. Let's do these calculations to prove that our theory is correct. So. The worst mistake you can make on a calculator like this, well probably not the worst, but one of the silliest mistakes, is not paying attention to what you're typing in and typing the wrong thing. What will happen is that your calculator will always give you the right answer according to the information you've given it. So if you give it the wrong information, it will give you the wrong answer but right according to your information. And what you notice? It is exactly how we've said it. Uh, 190 times by 2.5 squared will equal 1,187.5, and that's what our calculations equal as well. 1,187.5 centimeters squared. Now these types of questions, like the one we've just done, typically only done at the beginning of the lesson. So you won't find them in tests or exams. What they'll rather ask you is to find the new total surface area without showing all of the calculations we've done. So they'll just want you to take the 190 and multiply it by 2.5 squared. Let's move on to the next question. Question 3, B, by what factor does the volume of the prism increase? Well, let's start by working out the volume. And remember, volume is a lot easier to work out because all you do is you take the area of the base, which is going to be 5 times 3, and you multiply it by the height, which should give you an answer of 150. But because we don't want to look silly, we're going to check it on the calculator gives us an answer of 150. 
So 150, is it centimeters squared or cubed? Well, it's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. So that means it is cubed. If I want to know the factor by which it would increase, I know that it's because it is volume, it should increase by 2.5 to the power of 3. But in order to show all my calculations, I'm going to do that by finding out what my new dimensions are. And we've done this on the previous slide, so I'm just going to write them in quickly. 5 times 2.5 gave us an answer of 12.5 and 3 times by 2.5 gave us an answer of 7.5. Now let's do the new volume and that will be 7.5 times by 12.5 to find the area of the base then we multiply by the height of the prism which is 25 and let's find out what the answer is and 7.5 times by 12.5 times by 25 gives us an answer of 2343 comma 75 2343 75. Now let's experiment. Let's see what 150 times by 2.5 to the power of 3 is. One hundred and fifty times by 2.5 to the power of 3 is equals to 2343,75. Now this only works if all of the dimensions have been increased by a scale factor. If just one length has been increased, then you have to work out everything individually again with a new measurement. And what you'll often find is that there is a question saying that the volume has stayed the same, but the, the height of the prism, ha prism has halved, what has happened to the area of the base, and then you need to calculate that by yourself. Let's move on to question four. Now question four has the A and the B. And we're going to work with it like they are numbers. So we have to determine the volume in terms of A and B. A is our radius. So radius is equals to A. B is our height of the prism. And remember that if we're working out volume, we need to work out the area of the base. So that's going to be pi r squared and multiply it by the height of the prism. So our volume is going to be equal to pi a squared times by b. Can we do anything more with that? No, we don't have any values. So that is our final answer. Volume is equals to pi a squared times by b. Let's move on to the next part. Determine the surface area in terms of A and B. Now, remember when you're working with surface area, it's best to draw the net out. And remember the net is the unfolded solid. So if you were to take the cardboard box, cut it out and lay it flat, this is how it would look. It just helps us to remember which shapes go where. Let's look. Okay, I'm going to unfold the solid and what we'll notice is that we have two circles and a rectangle. And you'll remember that this rectangle has a length that is equal to the circumference of the circles. If we need to work out the area of the two circles, they're going to be identical and we could just multiply it by two rather than doing two separate calculations. So two circles plus a rectangle will give us the total surface area. The two circles, it's right over here, surface area is going to equal 2 times pi r squared plus, and what is the area of the rectangle? Well, our h and our 2 pi r. Where does 2 pi r come from? Yes, it is the circumference of the circle. Let's just show that to you again. The circumference of the circle is the same as the length of the rectangle because a rectangle needs to wrap around 
the circle. And we multiply that by the height. But of course, that's not the end of the question. We still need to substitute our values in. Now, radius was equals to A, and our height of our prism is equals to H, or equal to B. And that means our answer is going to be 2 pi A squared. We don't really need the brackets, so let's get rid of them. A squared plus 2 pi a times by h, which is b. Now, what is really nice about this question is that we can factorize it further. You'll notice that there is a common factor on either side of the plus sign. Remember, the plus shows us that there are two terms. And whenever there are more than one term, we can factorize. So let's do some factorizing. Our common factors are easier to see if we highlight them. So I'm going to underline the 2's are common, the pi's are common, and even the a's are common. So I'm going to start by taking out a common factor of 2 pi a. And what am I left with of the first term? I'm left with just a. And what am I left with of the second term? just b. And there we go, that's complete. Let's move on to question 4c. Now 4c says you, if you want to double the volume but keep the radius the same, by what factor will the height increase? Well, the volume to begin with uh, was a previous slide where it was pi a squared plus and uh, times by b. So let's start with that down there. Original volume is equals to pi a squared times by b. We want to double the volume, so we're going to multiply the original volume by 2, which means that all of these calculations are going to be multiplied by 2, but the height, the radius must stay the same, but the height will increase. So what is that 2 actually multiplying? We don't want it to multiply the a. The radius we want to keep the same. However, the height we do want to change. What is the height increasing by? The height will become 2 times its length. And that's how we calculate it. Let's move on to 4D. These questions are testing your theoretical knowledge of volume and surface area and increasing by different dimensions. 4D says if the radius is doubled but the height stays the same, by what factor will the area of the base of the cylinder increase? Now, this is quite an interesting question because they're testing that you can read it properly. If the radius is doubled, so now we have 2a, but the height stays the same, by what factor will the area of the base of the cylinder increase? Is it asking for the total surface area? No, it's just the area of the base. The original base was equals to pi r squared, which was a, but now the new base, and remember we're just looking at the base of the shape, so we're just looking at the circle at the bottom. The new base is going to be pi 2a squared. Why have I put 2a in brackets? Because the whole radius needs to be squared, and when we square that, we're actually going to find that it becomes pi 4a squared, and let's just write it neatly. In other words, 4 goes in the front, then pi, then a squared. So, by what factor will the area of the base of the cylinder increase? Well, what is the difference between the original, where there was a 1, times by pi a squared, 
to now where there is a 4 times by pi a squared. The factor is equals to 4 of increase is equals to 4. Question 4e. If the radius is doubled but the height stays the same, by what factor will the area of the side surface of the cylinder increase? So once again, we're not talking about the total surface area. We're now talking about the rectangle in the surface area calculation. So we don't want to know about the circles. We just want to know about the rectangle. If the radius is doubled, that's going to affect our circumference measurement. Remember, it was 2 pi r times by h which we changed to 2 pi a times by b. If the height stays the same, uh, but the radius is doubled, what's going to happen over there? Our new area is going to equal 2 pi. And how has the radius changed? It's been multiplied by 2 times by b which of course means that it has changed our calculation by a factor of 2 because 2 times 2 gives us 4 pi a times b. And what is the factor difference between, let's use green, between the 2 and the 4? We have multiplied by a factor of 2. So the factor of increase is equals to 4, is equals to 2 at least. Some of you might be wondering what's the mathematics behind that. Well, let's look at it. What is 4 divided by 2? It's equals to 2, and it really is that easy. We've now gone through right prisms in quite a lot of detail. We're now going to move on to triangular prisms as well as cones and spheres. Now these can get a little confusing for some people, but you've just got to remember the systems that go behind developing the formula. Let's take a look at some pyramids. Okay, there are two types of pyramids you will deal with. The first one will be a square-based pyramid, and the second one will be an equilateral triangle-based pyramid. Once again, remember that I'm talking about the bases, so the bases are important. The surface area of a pyramid is going to be all of the shapes added together. And remember, when we unfold the shapes, what is it called? It's called the net. And here we have our square-based pyramid. It looks a little bit like a star when you unfold it. How many triangles are in a square-based pyramid? There are four triangles. What do you know about these triangles? They're all going to be the same shape because it is a right pyramid. So they are equal to each other in area. What do we know about a square? Well, a square is base times height, and the base and the heights are the same measurement. So that means if we label this, and for this we're going to call it side times side, so our area of our base is side times side plus how many triangles do we have? We have four triangles and what are our four triangles measurements? Well, it's going to be half because our triangle area is multiplied by half times by side times by our perpendicular height of the triangle. And that's the calculation. Let's make it more simple by saying it's going to be side squared plus 2 times side times h. The square-based pyramid and the triangular-based pyramid do look similar, but the triangle at the bottom makes a big difference. In order to work out the surface area of, or the total surface area of the triangular-based pyramid, it often means that you need to use Pythagoras to find certain bases and certain heights. You need to tackle each question individually. So take it on, redraw the net, and then figure out the measurements that you need to figure out. Let's look at the example that's over here. We'll start by adding in a few labels. We have the height of the side of a triangle. 
let's label the base of the triangle. Now what you'll notice is this base will be the same length the whole way around. If we were to redraw this triangle, remember the middle triangle is the equilateral triangle, but it does not mean that the outside triangles are the same size as the middle triangle. However, they will be the same size as each other. So whatever the area is of the top triangles, it will be multiplied by three. So in order to find the surface area of a triangular based pyramid, you need to first find the base triangle and then add the three side triangles, three times side triangle. And that's what we're going to attempt to show you now. At the moment, our side triangle is very easily um, shown. It's got our height and it's got our base. So our side triangle calculation is going to be 3 times by a half times base times perpendicular height. The difficulty is showing this bottom triangle when nothing has been shown to us. So what we need to do is draw in the perpendicular height of the base triangle. So really what I've done is I've taken the base triangle and I've got a perpendicular height and I'm going to label that over there H with a B at the bottom to show me that it's the perpendicular height of that. I'm still using the same base so that at least makes it easier. Now remember when we work out the area of a triangle it's going to be half times our base times our perpendicular height and our height in this case is labeled HB. To make this a little bit easier to notice as well I'm going to label this HS to show that it's the height of the sides. So in order to work out the surface area, it's going to be half times base times the height of the base plus three times half times base times the height of the side. Let's move on to finding the volume of right pyramids. Once again, we're working with a square based pyramid and a triangular based pyramid and the volume is a lot easier to calculate than the surface area. We need to find the base and the perpendicular height and then what we need to do is multiply it by a third. So we find the base shape or base area, we multiply it by the height and what do we multiply that by? By a third. So that means over here it's going to be a third times by and for the sake of consistency I'm going to call this side times side as previously. So times by side squared times by h will give us the volume of the right prism. Below what do we need to find the area of? It's that base shape and the base shape is the equilateral triangle. So we need to find the base of that. Let's just quickly draw in the rest of this and this is going to be at a right angle to that. We've got base times by a small h, we'll give it h to the b, times by perpendicular height, times by a third, once again. So a third times by half, times base, times the height of the base, times by the height of the pyramid and this is the volume. Up here this is also the volume. So when calculating the volume for these two pyramids it's very similar to calculating the volume for other solids. You just need to take your normal volume calculations and multiply those by a third. Let's move on to spheres and to cones. Okay, surface area of a right cone and a sphere. Now for these we're going to have to draw in some of the things. Now the surface area is equals to the area of the base plus the area of the walls. And in this case that is going to be surface area is equals to pi r squared, where is our r? 
Well, it's the line that goes from the center of the circle to the end, so there is our R, plus half times by 2 pi R. And where does 2 pi R come from? Well, if you said it was the circumference, you would be correct. And what does this calculation over here look like? If you said half times by base times by height, as in a triangle, you would be correct. So what's happening over here is we're saying the base of the triangle that wraps around the circle is going to be equal to 2 pi r. And this h, where does that h come in? Well, it's actually the height of the triangle. So it says if someone was walking up this mountain, the height they would have to, or the distance they would have to walk up that mountain. So not so bad. You need to remember that calculation if you can't work out how to do it yourself. And then we have the sphere. And the total surface area of a sphere is going to be equal to 4 pi r squared. You need to remember those two calculations. They're a little bit difficult to figure out as you get to an exam. So make sure that you have memorized them before you get to exams and tests. Make sure that you know them on Sunday evenings when you're doing your science homework. Make sure you know them all the time. Let's move on to the volume calculations for these two solids. Okay, the volume calculations for a cylinder are very similar to the volume calculations for a pyramid. If you are thinking now we're going to multiply it by a third, you would be correct. It's going to be a third times the area of the base times by the height of the cone, which is of course the capital H. Let's just draw that in very quickly. And let's draw an R. There's our R, there's our height of the cone. So that means this formula for volume is going to be equal to a third times by the area of the base, which is pi r squared, times by the height of the cone. And the sphere. The volume is equals to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Grade 10s, I think it's time for a break before we move on to some questions where we apply these skills. We'll see you just now. Welcome back Grade 10s. We're going to go through question 5 and 6 to practice our skills in more complicated problems. We'll start with question 5 where we're working with the square based pyramid. Question 5 says Calculate the surface area and the volume of the right pyramid with the square base of side length equal to 15 cm and a height of 12 cm. Now, if this looks confusing, it is confusing. So you're getting the right feeling. We have got to work out the surface area and the volume of this pyramid, but we only really have two measurements. We have the length of one of the sides, which is the same all the way around, and we have the height of the pyramid. What can we work out? Well, we can work out the volume quite easily. Remember, volume of a pyramid is very similar to volume of a right prism. We just need to multiply it by a third. So it's going to be third times the base times by the height. And what is the base shape? It's 15 times 15 because it is a square. And what is the height? It's 12. And to complete this calculation, I'm going to use the calculator. And it's going to be 1 over 3 times by 15 times by 15 times by 12, giving me an answer of 900. What units is this in? If you said centimeters cubed, you would be correct. Why is it centimeters cubed? Because it is centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. The third does not indicate centimeters, it's just a third. 
Moving on to surface area. Remember with surface area, it's easier to first draw the net, which is the unfolded solid, and then calculate the different shapes individually. Let's do that. Now, being a square-based pyramid, it means that the bottom is going to be a square. What are the measurements? Well, it's going to be 15 by 15. I'm not going to draw it all the way around because by putting those lengths in, I'm indicating that it's 15 by 15. And draw some very long triangles. Do we know the height of these triangles? No, we don't, and that is a problem because in order to work out the area of one of these triangles, we need to know what the height is. How are we going to work out the height? Well, let's look at this um, pyramid over here and let's cut it in half. So what I'm going to do, and stay with me here, is I've taken this pyramid and taken a knife down the center down the center over there and cut it so that we have a side on view. And that 12 centimeters is going to be reflected over there. What is the measurement across over there? So this is our view. The measurement across there is 15 centimeters. Now, many of, for many of you, this is going to start ringing bells. You're going to start thinking about right angle triangles and Pythagoras, but then half of you will be lost because you, you won't know what that base measurement is. Remember, the height of this triangle is actually dividing the triangle in half because it is a right pyramid. It means that the highest point is directly above the bottom or directly above the middle of the base. So. If we want the one side of the triangle, the distance of the one side, all we need to do is take 15 and divide it by two. Let's do that. So in this triangle, we're going to divide 15 by two and write 7.5 on this side. So we know that that length is equals to 7.5, 7.5 on this side. Of course, here is our right angle. We need to work out this over there because that's the height that we're looking for over there. How are we going to do that? Well, that height is actually our hypotenuse in this triangle. So it will be equal to 12 squared plus 7.5 squared. And before we put this into the calculator, let's just write out our calculations in full. I hope all of you know that 12 squared is 144, not 174. Uh, but it's always best to use your calculator to check. Okay. So what we're going to do is 12 squared plus 7.5 squared. And we're finding the square root of that so that we can find our value for h. And it's 14.1507. 9717. Why aren't I rounding off? Well, it is too early to round off. If I round off at this stage, I will get an answer that's not exactly correct. Always wait until the very last step to round off. Now that we have the height of this triangle, 14,1507, we can then work out what the area of each of those triangles are. So the surface area is going to be the area of the base, which is 15 times 15, plus the area of four different triangles. So four times, and what's the area for a triangle? Half times base, which is 15, times by height, which is 14, comma one, five, it goes on forever and ever, which will give us an answer of, and let's use our calculator to do it, 15 times by 15 plus four into brackets, half, and remember you can type 0.5 rather than half, times by 15 times by, and then that very long number, 14, 
0.717. Close our brackets. Let's see what the answer is. 649,529 blah blah blah. They didn't specify how many decimal places to round it off to, so I'm going to round it off to two decimal places and make it 649,53. 649, not 59. 649,53. Is it centimeters squared or cubed? Because it's a surface area calculation, it's going to be squared. Many of your pyramids will require you doing some kind of Pythagoras, so make sure that you have revised it before doing a test or an exam on this section. The next question we're going to do focuses on something called composite solids. Now composite solids just means that we've taken a couple of solids and we've thrown them together to form a new shape. One of the favorite shapes to make from this is some kind of ice cream cone, which has the cone with a hemisphere at the top. Remember that a hemisphere is half of a sphere. So if you're ever asked to calculate a hemis hemisphere, find the volume of a sphere and divide it by two, or find the surface sphere, the surface area of the sphere and divide it by two. Let's move on to the next question. Now this composite solids question has both a square based pyramid as well as a cube in it. The question says the solid below is made up of a cube and a square pyramid. Find its volume and surface area correct to one decimal place. Now you'll notice that it only has two measurements, five centimeters and 11 centimeters, which means that most of our information is coming from the top. It's a cube and a square based pyramid it's got 11 centimeters and 5 centimeters. Now, if that is 5 centimeters down there, this is 5 centimeters over here, and on the side is also 5 centimeters, which means what is the difference in height? Well, this is 5 centimeters, making the top 11 minus 5, which is 6 centimeters. So what's the height of our square based pyramid? If you said six centimeters, you would be correct. Now let's start with the volume because volume is always the easiest. Volume of a cube is going to be five times five times five. Where did I get that from? Well, the area of the base is going to be five times five times by the height of the prism is five that will give us the volume of the cube. But we still need to discover what the volume of the triangular prism is. Remember, volume of a triangular pyramid, at least, is a third times the area of the base, which is five times five, and times the perpendicular height, which will be six. So pretty easy to put down. Let's calculate it on the calculator. Five times five times five will be the volume of the cube. And we're adding the volume of the pyramid, which is a third, times five times five times six will give us a volume of 175 centimeters cubed. Now, when you're doing um, surface area with composite solids, you need to make sure that you don't include all of the sides because sometimes what will happen is when two composite solids are stuck together, you'll lose one of the sides. So let's say the side of a cylinder against the size of a rectangular based prism. You'll lose those and you need to make those adjustments in your calculations. So yes, draw your nets to figure out which shapes you're working out the area for but don't forget to leave out the sides that don't need surface area calculations. Let's do this. Now with the surface area calculations for this, we do have the cube. Let's change color. But for the cube, we've only got, and it's not a very well drawn cube because it looks rectangular. I'm sorry about that. But the cube is actually open at the top. 
So we've only got five sides to work out and the surface area of the cube is going to be one of those sides and how many versions do we have of them? Times five. So we've got five sides that are five times five in area. And that will give us an answer of 125 centimeters squared. Let's just check that on the calculator. Five times five times five. Yes, 125 centimeters squared. Let's take a look at this pyramid now. If we were to unfold the pyramid, we would have the square at the bottom. However, are we counting that as part of our calculations? No, we're not. We don't want that square at all. We only want to calculate the surface area of those four triangles. We know that the base is equals to five, but do we know what the height is? Not yet. How are we going to calculate that? Well, if you're thinking Pythagoras, you are thinking correctly. Over here, we know that our height from the center is going to be six centimeters. So that means if we do a little dissection over here, we've got a base across that is five centimeters and we've got a height of six centimeters and we need to calculate this other height over here. Now we're working with a triangle that has a perpendicular height that is bisecting the base. Bisecting means it's dividing it in two. The base is five centimeters, which means when we divide it into two, it's going to be two and a half centimeters. The, our height that we need to calculate is the hypotenuse, so it's very similar to the question before. And if you can master the skill, you'll be able to do most of the exam questions that come your way. Let's do the question. So our height squared is going to be equal to two and a half squared. Where did the two and a half come from? It's five divided by two plus our six centimeters squared. And before we put it into the calculator, we might as well get all our calculations sorted out over here. And let's find out what the calculator says. Put the square root sign in. 2.5 squared plus 6 squared will give us an answer of 6.5. So our height is 6.5 centimeters. Let's fill it in over here. Okay, we are now able to work out the area of that triangle. So therefore the area Let's put a therefore in. Area of triangle is equals to half times by five, that's our base, times by 6.5, which is our height. And let's write that down. Half times by five times by 6.5 is equals to 16.25. I have done something rather intentionally over here. I've worked out the area of one triangle. There are four triangles in total. Now often what I find when I'm marking someone's work is that they will do these complicated calculations with the Pythagoras and cutting triangles in half and then they'll find the area of one triangle and forget to multiply it by four. Please don't forget you've done all of the difficult work to now multiply that answer by four. Once we've multiplied that answer by four, we add the total surface area of the triangles to the total surface area of the cube and we'll find the total surface area of the composite solid. Let's do that. Okay, so therefore, four triangles, area of four triangles is equals to 16.25 times by four. And just so we don't get it wrong, 
Let's do that on the calculator. Times by 4 is 65 centimeters squared. And therefore, our total surface area is equals to 65 plus, and our previous value was 125, which gives us an answer of 65 plus 125 is 190, 190 centimeters squared. Grade tens, I hope you'll be able to discover these formulas on your own as you work through them. You need to see the logic behind how they are formed and then you'll be able to tackle any composite solid, any pyramid or cone or sphere that's thrown at you. You can do this, you have the ability, keep up with the practice and good luck.